Hello, my love. Okay, I am coming at you today in my sweat suit. I literally just an hour and a half ago handed in my 121,000 words to my publisher, Penguin. It was my first draft for my second book. Oh my God. Like I, I handed it in, I closed my laptop and I like fell to the ground and cried. And my husband came in and he was like, are you okay? I'm like, oh fuck, like shit. Gave me a big hug. And if you're new here, you're like, what the hell is Erica talking about? I just, it's been a tough year, man. It's been difficult. It's been really hard. And it's been incredible as well, all at the same time. Like this is the year, 2024 is this year that it's the most amazing, craziest, amazing things you could imagine and the worst, most horrible, horrific things at once. I haven't had a year like this before. And it's only like June. So literally when I tell you this half, first half of the year feels like I lived seven years. I handed the book in. They gave me nine weeks or 10 weeks to write it, maybe 12 weeks. I didn't start because of my TED talk. And I didn't start and maybe I, I finished it in seven weeks. So seven weeks to write. I'm not saying that to flex. I'm saying that like, are you a psychopath, Erica? What were you thinking? How the hell did you do it? Um, and I'm doing this podcast and it's perfect timing. Like I literally just got my bleed. The full moon just finished and I handed in this manuscript and perfect timing. Last night, my husband and I were watching a podcast with Layla Hermosi and Chris Doe, who I love, who I want to get on the podcast. Chris Doe is amazing. And he was interviewing Layla Hermosi and the best interview I have watched of hers. Like I like her more now and I understand her more and I, I rate and get her so much more because of that episode. Anyway, we watched it and there was something that she shared that made me like a light bulb went off in my head. And I'm doing this episode and I'm starting it in this way on purpose. And it's so freaking crazy that it worked out this way because we need to tell the truth. We need to tell the truth. Those of us in business, those of us that have massive impact to make, those of us that are here because we want to make the world a better place, those of us that are listening to this that are like, I'm here to help humanity. I want to help business owners. I want to support women. I want to help mothers. I want to be a helper. I want to be of service. If we are here to be of service, we need to tell the truth. And so I always, as much as I can, I mean, I did a podcast three or four podcasts ago about my season of hard and basically how hard shit is. And I just spoke some truth because here's what I don't want. I don't want anybody that watches me, that follows me, that listens to my podcast, that is subscribed to my email list, that is in my program to think for a second that I got it easy that it's so easy, that it's always great, that I'm always confident, that life is amazing and I always feel good and secure about myself and that I've nailed it. And I'm like, hashtag killing it, slaying it. No, <laughs> that I'm not scared. No, as much as I can, I tell you how scared I am, how worried I am, how much struggle I go through. I, I share my shit raw and real from the gate, from the beginning, not as a strategy, but because I wanna feel free. And because I'm authentic with myself, I'm real and raw with myself, I'm vulnerable with myself, I'm comfortable with that shit. And if you're not cool, then I'm not for you. But if you are, welcome home, baby. Like, I want to be able to share all my shit with you. And I'm telling you now, the last, ooh, the last six months have been so hard and so amazing. How? At once. So Erica decides to do this book. Number one, hello, Penguin, dream publisher. Pinch me, are you kidding me? Like I have so many books I wanna write and I want to collaborate with them and I wanna get in bed with them forever and I love them and they are amazing. Incredible opportunity, I'm so grateful. I got paid to write this book, are you kidding me? Like what? Please, amazing. However, when I submitted the proposal for the book in December, I also submitted for the TEDx talk in December and I got both like within a week. It was like, you got a TEDx talk. 
And I just like shit myself because y'all know if you listen to the podcast, I've done so many episodes on me being like one day when I do a TEDx talk, but I don't think I ever can to then be like, I'm doing one to then be like, I did one. And it's about to come out in June. So once it's out, y'all know I'm going to share it and I hope you watch it and just know that I was scared as fuck and blacked out and don't remember shit about shit. I hope it's good. <laughs> I'm scared to watch it myself. So here I am, got the TEDx, got the book deal with Penguin. I'm like, oh my God. January, I knew. January was a marinating month. I was like, I know at the end of January, it's game on. At the end of January, I have a four-day conference. I'm speaking and then February and then March and then Mar March is crazy because of International Women's Day. And then it's also TEDx and then we got the book. So I knew it was like, bah, 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 bah. like in, Ju in January, it was a wrap. So I was like, happy new year. Oh shit. Like my butt cheeks were clenching because I was scared and scared, like excited, but also like, oh shit. Right now at the same time, my mom's health has been deteriorating. So my mom has bipolar, manic depression. She's been sick my whole life and she now has dementia. Oof, and this is hard to talk about because as soon as I turned in my book today, as soon as I sent the email and I closed my laptop, my mother came from the back of my head. It was like she was buried under 119,000 words. I couldn't have her at the forefront. I couldn't. There's no way I could have put her at the forefront. It was too much. It's been too much. And there's only so much you can handle and so much you can do when you have big dreams, when you have children, when you have a relationship, when you have your health, your wellness, like all the things. So I had to put that back there because many reasons I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, me stressing out doesn't help, doesn't do anything like there's nothing I can do. I'm going back to America in July. We're going to sort it out and it's going to be the hardest thing about my trip is going to see my mom because it's not good news and it's hard, but we could do hard things, right? So I don't have her here. I don't have anything here. I'm handing in the book. When I tell you that I wrote this book in like seven weeks, I'm not joking. Like I went onto Google and said 70,000 words divided by seven weeks. That's 1400 words, about 1500 words a day. That's five pages a day. And I thought that's six minutes if I voice it into Rev because I use Rev.com. I love them, not sponsored. Unless y'all want to sponsor me, Rev, hit me up. I love Rev. I, I use them. I spent so much money on Rev. It's like a transcription app and I speak into the app and then it transcribes it and sends it to my email. When I tell you <laughs> that that's a six minute voicemail to myself about the book and I transcribed so much of my book because I, I'm not like a writer that sits down and writes. I'm like a speaker that writes. So sometimes I can write and other times I speak and I walk and I speak and I look at what I wrote and then I speak to what I wrote and then I that, that's how I work, right? I need inspiration and motivation. And so I'm doing that. Meanwhile, I've been trying to get my health on track since like two or three years ago. It's been a problem up and down for me. And this is the first time I've been like, I'm doing really well with it. I'm seeing my naturopath, Dr. Kirsty. Shout out to the Holland Clinic. She's incredible, feeling amazing. And then March came. And in March, I traveled all around Australia and I dropped the ball because I wasn't eating what I was supposed to be eating. I wasn't moving my body because I was all over the country. Not excuses, I dropped the ball. I did it, right? But I remember listening to Hermosi. Alex Hermosi said something on a podcast uh, on YouTube and he said, when you are trying to lose weight, like 20 pounds, 10 pounds, lose weight, eat healthy, and that's your focus, you can focus on nothing else because the fucking meal preps, the exercise, the making time for this, never mind you got kids, never mind you got this, never mind you got that. And it just gave me like permission to go, hey, you're not fully focused on this because you're trying to write a book and you're trying to do a TEDx talk and you have 14 keynotes and you got clients and, and, and. Cool, so chill. So I don't berate myself. Like I don't thrash myself when I do the wrong thing because I know that you can't go 100 on everything. And it gave me some relief. But April came and I'm like, damn, I did gain a bit of weight. Damn, I don't feel as good. Damn, I feel a bit sluggish. So what has to happen? I can't do shit. So I'm like, I got to finish the book. Like the emergency priority was the book after TED. And I'll tell you right now, they gave me the go ahead in February, February 15th. They were like, go, you could write. And I was like, cool. I'll write after Ted. Ted was March 16th. Then I went to a talk right after Ted. I was in Perth on the other side of Australia, did my TEDx talk, came back to Melbourne, did it, then flew to Queensland the next day for another fucking event. Like that's how March was. And this is this week. I just handed in my book and I want to lay on the floor. I'm bleeding and I just want to cry. But tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to get on a plane to Sydney to speak. And then I'm coming back and then we're running a sisterhood day. 
and then next week I can chill. But this is how it is. When you're trying to do big shit as if it's going to chill, and I don't want it to be chill. But I'm also not sitting here pretending like everything's amazing, guys. Like just growing my following and like getting all these speaking gigs and like, you know, like writing a book with Penguin and like making seven figures. Yo, it's not like that. I'm over here crying. Some days I look like shit. I haven't put my nails on. Y'all know I love my nails. I haven't been able to wear them. I feel a little bit like shabby when I'm going out to these things. I'm tired. My brain capacity, my creative brain has been on since January 14th. Like my brain's always on, but my creative brain, like creating and memorizing a TEDx talk and doing that monologue and then creating a book and then pulling out things for a book. Whew, I'm red since Jan. It's fucking May, end of May, June, six months. I'm so blessed. I only got sick once this year. I barely get sick. Thank goodness. I started losing hair. Like the front of my scalp, I was losing hair, my friend. Like I was losing hair. Like perimenopause is coming for me and or stress. And my, my naturopath, she's like, baby, that's stress, cortisol. What the fuck do I do though? How to get rid of stress. Don't live a stressful life. Okay, welcome to planet fucking earth human being called Erica Kramer who wants to take over the world. So what do I do? Thank fuck I've got her. I'm going to get acupuncture. I'm taking all my supplements. I'm doing my thing. I'm fasting, right? I'm exercising. Exercise helps me so much. But I just want to tell you that it's been fucking hard. And if you are someone who works for like helping people in business, if you're an influencer of any kind, if you're a business owner that wants to help other business owners, if you're a business coach, don't lie to people. Tell people the fucking truth, yo. Tell people the truth. Tell people you're going through a tough time. Maybe you don't want to share your business. I love sharing my business. It's my superpower. Nobody could touch me because I own my shit. I own it. When I fuck up, when bad things happen, I own it. And then no one has power over me. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe you don't like to expose all your business. That's fine. You don't have to. But don't lie to your audience. Don't pretend like everything's all good in the hood and you're taking the photos and the highlight reels. Yo, my life is amazing. And you know that your grandpa is sick and just died and you're sad. Or you and your husband aren't doing well. Or maybe your health is not great. I'm not saying tell people that your health isn't great. But you don't have to be up on stories like everything's all good in the hood. And you're like, anyway, back to it. Seven figures in Bali, blah, 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 whatever it is. Keep it real, my friend. You know why? It's good for the world when we keep it real. It's good for people to know that Erica's not unstoppable. It's good for the world to know that the air quotes queen of confidence is scared as fuck most of the time. It's good for the world to know that I don't always have my shit together. And I don't know what's going to happen with my mom. And it freaks me out. And I'm scared. It's good for the world to know that life is hard sometimes. It's good for the world to know or your clients to know that business isn't always great and it isn't always easy. I've been talking to a lot of women this month with Queen's Table and some of the seven-figure boss bitches. A lot of people got money shit coming up right now. Cash flow issues. Not one, but eight of the women I spoke to. And they're successful ass women. And then when I speak to my friends who are successful and they're like, yo, shit's a bit wild, right? I'm like, hell yeah, it's wild. This wildest financial wildness has been like super wild. And everybody's like, oh, thank God. I thought it was only me. You know what that does? You know what that does? That does. Hey, baby, it's not only you. Shit is crazy. Yeah, me too. Oh, me too. Oh, you have oily roots and dry ends. Me too. <laughs> it's fucking relatable. You feel like a human as opposed to like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not feeling any of that. Everything's amazing over here. And shit's breaking in your life, but you don't dare to talk about it. And you think that's being of service and it's not. It's actually better to tell the truth. You don't got to blast your business, but you'll be like, hey, shit is hard right now for me personally, but I'm here because I want to show up and I love you and I want to be here for you. But personally, I'll tell you, it's the hardest time I've been through. And I haven't told you no details. You don't have to go into the details, but pretending that everything's all good in the hood and showing up on social media, happy as Larry with photos and making it, then nobody knows. Like, does that make sense? It feels like an echo chamber, like, Am I the only one struggling? Am I the only one feeling like this? Everywhere I look, it seems like everyone's killing it and everything's amazing. I'm going to tell you from me, it's not for me. Everything's not amazing and I'm not killing it. This is the most vulnerable time for me and my husband ever. Shit is coming in in different places. Money's coming from different places. We've had to surrender so much about the way our business has changed. Staff, team, my shit with my mom, like paying for shit in USD. That shit is wild. I'm taking my whole family to the United States. Australian dollar versus American dollar, no bueno, okay? 
but we're doing it and we're trusting. And at the same time, I'm having miracles like Penguin's book, like interviewing amazing people on my podcast, like doing my TEDx, like being in demand as a speaker. Like I haven't got so many speaking requests that I've gotten now, like ever in my life. They're coming in. Hamish is like my secretary with all the gigs. It's amazing. What a blessing. And my back hurts and my brain hurts and I'm fucking tired. And I'm a sad daughter because I don't know what's going to happen to my mother. I have no idea. And, and I can hold all of it. And I'm so excited to go back to the US and I'm fucking terrified. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I never want to give you the impression that everything's all good and perfect for the queen of confidence. Why? Because I want you to understand that what you go through, I get it. I understand it's real. And, and, and you can have a great life and you can overcome your shit and you should. And you have choices as to how you want to show up and the world will always bring you problems, baby. If it's not the economy, it's a client. If it's not the client, it's your partner. If it's not the partner, you get sick. If it's not that, there's always going to be shit. It's not about the shit out there. It's about how you deal with it. But I, me, the kind of person of influence that I would like to be is I want you to know the real deal from me. I want to tell you the truth. Because I want you to know that if you're going through it, you're not crazy. You're not alone. There's nothing wrong. This is how life is. What does Brooke Castillo say? 50% good, 50% shit. 50% of your life is going to be amazing and 50% is going to be hard and sad. And that's okay. It's how we learn to deal with it. And let me tell you what, this year has leveled me up to the extreme. If I ever wanted to grow, this has been the year for it. Maybe I said to the universe, hey, I want to grow. And the universe went, okay, here's all this fuckery and a little sprinkle of good shit. And I am grateful for the sprinkle of good shit. But we can't have that without the fuckery. We can't have that without the hard times. And so my invitation, if anybody looks to you, if it's your kids, if it's your friends, if it's your family, if you got a friend circle, if you are a mom and you have like a mother's group, keep it real. This shit is hard. My baby's not sleeping. Whatever. Keep it real. Not for any other reason than for you to free yourself and for you to bring the people with you that are also feeling like you. So many of us are so scared to be honest. We're not always making seven figures. Cash flow in business is a real fucking problem. Our team is not always on point. You know, not, there's not always happy-go-lucky shit going on. I don't always feel confident and amazing. Sometimes I feel overweight and lazy and gross. I'm like, fuck, what's happening to me? You know, sometimes I feel that. Sometimes I feel anxious. I don't want to fly. Then I'm like, hold on a minute. Like, that's the reality. It's waves. And if we as influencers, we as people of influence, we as business owners, we as impact and change makers and trailblazers can keep it 100 with our audience at least in whatever cryptic way you want to do it. If you don't want to tell people you had parasites in your butt like I did, I get you. That's not for everyone, okay? <laughs> There's some chicks on Instagram that are sharing their poo parasites on stories. And I'm in there like, wow, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know. That's not my place. I'll tell you about it, but I'm not going to put screenshots. But that's her place. I love that. You know why? Because then I can see it and go, ooh, okay, that's interesting. It helps me. It's of service. How can you be more honest? How can you be more of service? Whatever that is for you. I'm not here shaming anybody either, by the way. This is not a shame calling you out. I'm not fucking about that. I'm just inviting you. That if something's going on for you, consider that the best thing you can do is be honest with the people that look to you because it makes it human, baby. And this is a fucking human experience. And it's so helpful when we know that we're not the only ones going through this. So just so you know, my shit's a hot mess. Hot mess express. Uh, my water heater broke at the house. So we were taking cold showers. I'm actually at the office. We're taking a shower at the office, washing my ass because girls on the bleed. You know what I'm saying? We cannot be having showers, baby boo. So... <laughs> I try to keep it real. I try to tell you as much as I can. And even then you don't know everything, right? Because how do you do that? But just an invitation. If you're a person of influence, authenticity, and, and I mean real authenticity. I don't mean cute authenticity when it's, you know, cute for you. I mean like true authenticity. If you feel like you can share something, even if it's cryptic as fuck, it will help. Because people won't feel like they're the only ones going through this shit. And for me as a person of influence, that's what I hope to do with you. I love you. Thank you for being here. Holy shit, this book is going to come out and you are going to be the first to know when the pre-sale is on. You, like, I can't tell you. I can't tell you how good the book felt to give away and get back soon for the edits. It's going to be fire, baby. I love you. This is also real. If you're watching this video, like, this is me with no makeup and a badass hair day because it's cold. 
and I need to wash my ass now. Anyway, I love you. <laughs> I'll see you soon.